Autism rates, autism rates, they're going up. And that's my topic for today. I showed you this a few weeks ago, how the CDC changed their new estimate and now went from 1 in 68 to 1 in 59. I showed that to you a few weeks ago. Well, since then, there's been a lot of coverage about this. I've spoken to a number of classes and uh, did some uh, workshops about this. Um, look at this. Uh, from an interesting perspective, kind of making a little twist on this, incidence of autism rises but shows signs of leveling off. I don't think this is leveling off, guys. Uh, this is not leveling off, right? This is where we were in the 70s. This is where we were in 2009. And then we're still shooting up, right? Still shooting up. This is leveling off. This is not leveling off. Going up, not leveling off. Where is this all coming from? CDC website, right? This is their prevalence reports that they put out every couple of years, different diseases and stuff. Prevalence of autistic spectrum disorder among children age eight years from their 2014 numbers. Let's look at these numbers first. <clears throat> Georgia, where are we in Georgia, right? Uh, Georgia, we're like the middle of the pack. Uh, we have a prevalence rate of 17 out of every 1,000 uh, kids has autism. Uh, and the, the New Jersey is the worst for whatever reason. New Jersey is the worst, 29.3 prevalence, 29.3 of every, every 1,000. The best just of the 11 sites, um, that they measured was Arkansas for some reason, 13.1. Still not great, but certainly an improvement. Got to find out why that is, huh? Uh, so they had measured 325,000 children, 5,400 or so of them um, were on the autistic spectrum. But let's look a little deeper into these numbers that I think is even more important, and that's this. This is the, the percentage of children that talked about, uh, the parents that talked about development delay in their kids before they were diagnosed. <clears throat> so they had... 85% of parents say that below, before 36 months, before 36 months, they were already noticing a general developmental delay. But when were they diagnosed? 40% were diagnosed before 36 months, but over almost 60% were not, right? So what does that mean? That means, here's the key. The key is that early diagnosis, early detection is the key, right? And why is that important? Because that's what and what we as pediatric chiropractors is we want to look at kids' brains and nerve systems, right? We, I am noticing developmental delays all the time. We had a kid come in here the other day who was crawling funny, right? Crawling funny, you're not supposed to crawl on your rear end, right? That's not right. What that means is your brain is not figuring stuff out, right? You're, not, you're supposed to be able to, to nurse. You're supposed to be able to do normal things. You should digest food, all these things. We should be able to do all these things. Our kids should be able to figure all this stuff out, but they're not. And that's what we need to detect. Because when we see these early signs of some sort of issues going on, maybe maybe they might lead to something else later on. And that's what they're talking about. So what we're saying early general developmental delay, that's what they're talking about. We need to be on top of looking at our children and are they developing the right way? Are they developing on a, the trajectory that they ought to be? And if not, we need to think about this. We need to discuss it with the pediatricians, with <clears throat> your pediatric chiropractors. We need to discuss it to make sure that we take care, best care of our kids. <clears throat> That's our topic for today. You can uh, find us, Ruben Family Chiropractic, on Facebook. There's our phone number. There's our website. And check out our podcast at chirocast.com.